So I just saw Gretel and Ansel, a 2020 film. Hooray! I haven't reviewed a movie from this year in a while. It has been a tough year for cinema. This movie was pretty good. Gretel and Ansel is a new take on the popular story of Ansel and Gretel. They switch the names in the title because this way the movie will have something to differentiate itself from other films with the same characters. Also, Gretel is sort of the protagonist here, so it kind of makes sense to have her name first. From a visual and technical standpoint, this movie is wonderful to look at. The lighting, colors, framing, camera movement, everything is just so incredibly well done, it makes you wish the story was a bit stronger. The best parts of Gretel and Ansel are, without a doubt, the look of the film and its tone. It's a very stylistic and atmospheric movie. Some of the computer effects look a bit cheap, but not too horrible. Similar to the way Netflix's Stranger Things has cheap looking CGI. It's not perfect, but it doesn't ruin the film. It's fine, I can look past it and still enjoy myself. In terms of story and plot, it's pointless to try and tell you what exactly the movie is about. Like I said before, this movie's substance is its style. There is a plot and there are characters, but they are not nearly as interesting as the way the film looks and feels. If you have seen The Witch from 2015, then that's a good indicator to whether or not you'll enjoy Gretel and Ansel. I would say The Witch is a stronger movie far stronger actually, especially in terms of acting and dialogue. This is a period piece, so the dialogue tries to be as authentic as it can possibly be. It sort of works for the most part, but there are instances where characters say things that normal people would rarely say to each other. They say movie lines, or pieces of dialogue that are clearly meant to help the audience understand what's happening. Like how Ansel asked Gretel why her lips were so red when she was going to a job interview as a maid in a horror house. We only find out it's a horror house once that scene begins and you start hearing the noises of all the sex happening off screen. However, just before Ansel asked about the lips, Gretel wondered if the guy she was going to for a job had a wife or not. So the dialogue is not the best one out there. And to make things even worse, the young actors they had to play Ansel and Gretel don't always do the best job at acting. The boy is the worst actor in the film. There were some scenes where it was blatantly obvious that the kid was just regurgitating lines of dialogue he was forced to memorize, without any care to make it seem natural or organic. The girl that plays Gretel also has a few moments like this, but not to the same extent. The actress who plays the witch was by far the only one who seemed to know what she was doing. She did a pretty good job. It's a pity the story itself, and most of the actors weren't as wonderful to look at as the visuals and technical aspects of this film. I'm giving Gretel and Ansel a 7 out of 10. I completely understand why it has such a low rating on IMDb. It's not really a horror movie, it's more of an art film with horror elements than anything else. But I still enjoyed it, and there is a lot of talent in it. It definitely does not deserve a worse score than Suicide Squad or Aquaman, that's for sure. Watch this if you enjoy this type of movies, otherwise, see something else. I hear there's a sequel to Train to Busan, that might be fun. Or not. Anyway, see you next time.